Hi everyone, I wanted to give you an update on my fountain pens. I have been on a quest to color match my pens to my inks. I have made final selections and I wanted to share those with you. I do have to give a disclaimer on all of my fountain pen videos because there are very strong opinions in this community and hobby. Mine is very much a layman's collection. I am most definitely on a budget and I'm looking for specific features of the pens obviously nib the color and the material etc so there really is nothing special or worthy of collecting in the pens that i own they're not trophy pens they're not sitting on a shelf i do use them on a regular basis i am still in my very favorite pen case this is the lahit lab tefa pen case if you haven't seen this before and this honestly is just never going to change i'm just as much in love with this as i've always been and of course, I have to have my favorite pens in my favorite pen case. So here are my choices. I had several trains of thought as I was going throughout the decision-making process. Obviously, if you're talking about matching colors, you have to start with the primary and the secondary colors, the glorious rainbow of red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. So just those fun, happy, seasonal types of colors. I also filled in a few blanks of colors that I really liked that were not included in that. And so this is the fun rainbow happy side over here. And then on this side, I was just thinking about the pens that you use on an everyday basis, those standard basic colors, especially in the professional world. So those acceptable colors that you would use for writing or signing documents, journaling, the archival types of inks. And so that is what I've came up with. So really it's party on the left and business on the right is how I have this set up. I did put a lot of thought and research into each one of these pens, into what would work best for me within those parameters. I also, because I was matching inks, I did want to stick with just solid colored barrels instead of having a pattern to the pens as well. I also kept in the back of my mind the question of how can I find the fountain pen version of the pens that I already own and what I love and use on a daily basis. If you haven't seen any of my other pen videos, I do prefer Asian manufacturers and that's because I like finer nibs, the finer the better for me, especially when we're talking about something like this, these are all writing pens. And in general, Asian manufacturers do run about a size smaller than other manufacturers. I also prefer metal because I do like some weight to my pens. And also going along with color matching. I wanted to stick to just those nice true tones of the colors. I really don't like or prefer to use lighter inks or pastels. I feel like they, they just don't show up very well even on really good paper. I also wanted to shy away from the fluorescent colors because they really are just hard on my eyes and I don't like them. So I'm sticking more with those medium to darker jewel types of tones both in my pens and my inks. So as you can see, I do have a lot of pens here. This does hold quite a bit. Obviously it depends on the size of your pens, but I'm able to get 15, so seven on the left and eight on the right. And I wanted to go through each one of these briefly with you. So we'll start with the first color of the rainbow red. This is a Jin Hao X450. This is in the color of dark red, which is one of my favorite colors. And this is in a medium nib. I really like the J Urban 1670 line of inks. Obviously, I would use the Rouge Ermatite here. And with those specialty types of inks with the flakes and the glitter in them, I really don't feel comfortable using them in a pen that has smaller than a medium nib. So this pen works out perfectly for that. My next pen is the pink, and this is Jin Hao 301. This has a fine tip and it's a hooded nib. And as you can see, it's a much smaller in di diameter, which I really like. So that's what a hooded nib looks like if you've never seen those before. I got these in a pack of 11. They also come in a pack of eight and you can buy them singly, but I ended up with the set of 11 because this color and the turquoise and another one that I really liked only came in that 11 set, the larger set. I will link as many of these below as I can if you're interested in that. Honestly, pink is probably my least favorite color both in real life and in writing, but I felt like I really needed to include that. It is a pretty color and there are a lot of nice pink inks out there that I would want to use once in a while and I am a girl so that's why I used that. As you can see going along with the color I did go more towards a darker pink. I think they call this the rose color. 
for my orange, I ended up with a Lamy All Star, which means it's made out of aluminum. It has a little bit of weight to it, but not as much as some of the other metal pens. This is probably the only European brand that I own, and this is a German brand. This is in the color of copper orange. This came with an extra fine nib. And if you're not familiar with Lamy, they do have this brilliant line of easily interchangeable nibs. So I, of course, own all of them. It's going to be great to use. And they have basic colors of their pens that are there from year to year. They also have a limited edition that they come out with each year. It creates a lot of anticipation and excitement in the fountain pen community of what is what color is the Lamy version going to be this year. And this copper orange was actually the release for last year. And this kind of has a funny story to it. When I saw this, I thought, you know, the only people who are going to buy this is if orange is your favorite color, or if you're one of those people who is a collector and you want to have all of the limited editions. I really thought it was a miss and I didn't give it a single other thought other than that. Now, funny what a difference a year makes. So fast forward to this year when I decided I want to start matching, of course, I needed an orange. I did buy a couple of other pens and you know how it is online. You just, you do the best you can, but you don't really know until you get it in your hands and see it in real life. I just didn't like the way that they felt. I didn't like the way they looked. I didn't like the color. So back to the drawing board on orange, I was doing some more re research. Lo and behold, of course, what do I come across is the Lamy Copper Orange and completely changed my tune. Automatically, I thought, yes, that's exactly the orange that I was looking for. So never say never. And I guess it's good to laugh at yourself once in a while. Then the next one is my yellow. This is the Jin Hao 159. This is also in medium. I have a love-hate relationship with yellow pens. It goes back to that light and pastel. I just don't think they show up. I don't think that they're a viable option for a writing implement. And I understand why pen companies include them, obviously, because it's a primary color, but they're just not very practical in the real world. And so I didn't really want a yellow pen necessarily, but I really felt like I could not leave out the yellow when you're color matching. Also, how I'm using my other yellow pens is kind of like an underlining highlighter. So I did want to have that option in the fountain pen. And I just either underline the words or just kind of, if it's a paragraph, just kind of color that in. So that's going to be the one and only purpose of that yellow pen. And I'll probably use something like a firefly in this. And I forgot to say my favorite orange ink is the diamine autumn oak for the orange. Then we start with my green section. And as you can see, I just have one of each color over here and then Starting with the greens, I have more than one. And that's really because I just gravitate toward those darker types of colors. So the greens, the blues, browns, and grays, etc. And with the greens, I do like green. Obviously, I use it for color coding. And this one right here is the Pilot Metropolitan. This is the Retro Pops collection. This one is called Turquoise Dots. However, at least in my experience in real life, it really has more of green undertones to it. This is a fine nib. I don't believe that you can buy a Metropolitan Standard with, with extra fine, which is what I would prefer. But that's why this is included in my green section. I did want to have just kind of that standard basic green. And then I also wanted to have a darker green, kind of like an emerald or a forest green. Different choices there. And so my next green right here is this one. This is my only American manufactured pen that I own out of my entire collection. This is a Noodler's Ahab. Also, this is the only plastic pen that made the cut here. And also it's the only flex nib that I own. So it's a medium to fine flex nib. They do have several different colors in this green. This one is just the basic Amazon Pearl. Some of the other colors have some swirls in it, but which is what I was talking about. I didn't really want that. So it has some different characteristics, what I was looking for, but mainly the flex nib and the color of the barrel is what I really liked in this one. My blue section starts, as you can see, I actually have three blue pens and that's because if I have to choose, I would probably go to blue as my favorite color for writing. So this is another one of the Jin Hao 301s, 
with that fine hooded nib. This is in the turquoise and in real life, it's probably not showing up extremely well on the camera, but in real life, it does have more of blue undertones as compared to the turquoise dots of the Metropolitan. So I just really love the blues. I do write in kind of a sky blue, not necessarily a really light blue, but I like that color, the, the light sky blue or a turquoise. So that's why that one is in there. And then starts with fix this section over here. This is a Pilot Decimo. This is part of the Capless collection that they have. If you're unfamiliar, a Decimo is more like the thinner, more ladylike version of the Vanishing Point. And this one is in light blue, and this is an extra fine. I really love it. I have said this before, but if I have to choose only one of my pens to write with for the rest of my life, it's gonna be this one. I just think the color is just stunning. I think the, the blue is feminine enough that I just really like it. And of course, the extra fine. And it being the capless, I mean, yes. Then my next blue is a, an actual vanishing point. This is in a fine nib. And I would use more of like a blue-black in this, and then this one is just more of a standard blue. So I have three different blue options there. My next one is a Pilot Metropolitan, and this, when I bought it, I've seen it a couple different names, but when I bought it, it was called Violet Leopard, and this is in a fine point as well. I don't really write with purple. Obviously, I'm not going to pick a lavender or a light purple, so I just have the one purple here. And then my next section are the browns. I, this is another Jin Hao 301 from that same collection, again with that fine hooded nib in the gold. And I really like the Lee de Te. If you haven't seen that, that's more of like the coffee tea stain. It's a very nice medium brown stain. So I like that, but I also wanted to have a really deep, dark chocolate kind of brown option. And so that's why I ended up with this one. And this one I'm gonna show you because this was not included in the 11 piece set that I bought. I had to buy this by itself. And this one, does not have a hooded nib, it's just a regular nib, and this one is in medium. However, since it is a Japanese brand, it writes more like a fine pen, and I really, really like that one. In my grays and black section, I have another Pilot Decimo. This is in a fine point, and they call this the dark gray. And really why I bought this is because I'm a Hobonichi lover, and with that wonderful gray grid on their Tomori River paper, it's a perfect fit. Then. This one is a Pilot Vanishing Point. This one obviously is in black, and this is an extra fine nib on this one. I also have, this is the way my brain thinks. So as you can see, I've got two decimos. I've also got two vanishing points, and I wanted to just cover all my bases here. So with my decimos, the light blue is an extra fine, and the dark gray is a fine. With my vanishing points, the dark blue is a fine and the black is an extra fine. So I just wanted back and forth between the two. And as you can see with the blues as well, extra fine on the decimo, fine on the dark blue, and then a fine on the dark gray, and then an extra fine on the black. That's just the way I think. And I, I'm happy with that. And then lastly, I, have some white pens and once in a while you do want to write with some white ink on a darker piece of paper. So this is what I was talking about, just having the option of replacing some of my other pens. So this is a Jin Hao 321. This is also a fine nib. This is kind of similar or their version of the Pilot Metropolitan and this one also has a hooded nib on there. So that is it. I don't have any plans of buying any other pens. I don't even have any on my wish list. I did think about buying a brush nib. It was on my wish list, but it really is not getting good reviews. And so I took that off. And honestly, I would probably use that extremely sparingly. So dare I say that I have obtained fountain pen piece here. I also wanted to mention here at the very end, because I'm very price conscious, that I did with my 15 pens, total them all up, divided them up, and the average price is $35. That obviously is expensive if we're just talking about pens in general, but for the fountain pen world, $35 for an average price is extremely inexpensive and reasonable. So I am very comfortable 
with my choices. I'm very happy. I'm sure like many of you, sometimes I just open this up to look at it because it's a beautiful site. So thanks for watching you guys and I will talk to you again soon.